I think so, right? No? Yeah, a continuing our discussion of yesterday. No. No. See, yesterday went was so uh so <laughs> went so poorly, you just forgot everything. <laughs> okay, so we were doing yesterday. Um good. Uh how human interpersonal raos stem from ignorance. That was the short paragraph that we did. And uh and ignorance mean ignorance is a type of privation. This is in line with this theory that all raos are from privations. But it, it, here it's a privation of knowledge. And we said that there's two ways that you can lack knowledge. Emotional, like there's this factual knowledge that you could lack, like whatever, or you could not, it can't, you could like be lacking in that if you feel your emotions. Exactly. Denial. Right. So, for example, just two, two common examples again is that if you didn't know that a certain thing was unhealthy, then, uh, then you would end up harming yourself by like eating it or doing it because uh, you just didn't have the facts. Then let's say like the kid on the playground who who cuts in line to go in front of the slide. So he knows that you're not supposed to do that, but it's not real to him. He thinks that this is actually going to be somehow an advantage when in reality, like that's just going to make everyone on the playground hate him. Okay. Okay. So rather than dwell on this, we're going to move on to the next chapter because he he comes back to this topic in the chapter. But this chapter is the this chapter is the most important, I think, in what we're going to be doing in Eov. And it's also one of my favorite chapters in the Morning Bookham. So let's get started. Existence of Ra in the world is what my title for this chapter is. Okay, so, uh, and we'll do this the way we've been doing it is we'll read through it and uh, and then uh, summarize. Okay, uh, anyone want to read? Um, <laughs> Men frequently think that the Ra in the world are more numerous than the good things. Many non Jewish sayings and songs dwell on this idea. They say that goods are found only exceptionally. Okay, so oh, sorry. Before we go on, right? So I don't, I don't really know popular music. I don't know what if there are any like songs that you're aware of that do this. But I feel like the genre that does this. What what musical genre, like modern, puts all the emphasis on all of the bad stuff and how bad life is and how like I'm suffering and uh, emo, right? This is very like emo like uh, you know mentality here that there is more bad in the world than good and like life is suffering. Okay, so he's saying that that's what people, that's what the popular things are and that's what people believe. <laughs> I don't think he means specifically yeah, men, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, go on, Emily. Okay. Al Razi is the guy's name. Uh, Al Razi wrote a well known book on metaphysics of sociology. Among other mad and foolish things, it contains also the idea discovered by him. You have to say it sarcastically. Discovered by him. Yeah. <laughs> that there exists more raw than hope. So, this, of course, the happiness of man and his pleasures in the time of prosperity be compared with the mishap that befalls him. His grief, acute pain, defects, paralysis of the limbs, fears, anxieties, and troubles. It would seem as if the existence of a man is a punishment and a great raw. Okay, so Al Razi's uh, argument here is that there's more raw than Tov in the universe. And, and what is the basis of his argument? Observation. Yeah, observation, right? And what's his like method for making this conclusion here? Uh, but meaning like the method of like how is he what, what how is he will you keep you more specific i guess than observation like like, like yeah basically if you count up all the bad things and make a list and then you count up all the good things you'll have way more bad things than good things okay maybe that's also, his right that might be true i think according to this it sounds like yeah, I guess this could be included in the happiness of man and his pleasure. Yeah. Okay. So Ram is going to obviously disagree with this. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I skipped the thing. This would have made it clear. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This author commenced to verify his opinion by counting all around one by one. By this means, he opposed those who hold the correct view of the benefits bestowed by God and his evident kindness. Namely, that God is perfect goodness and all, and that all of that comes from him is actually yeah, now if you had to point to a one puzzle in the Torah or one phrase in the Torah that that is like says the Torah's view that's against Al Razi, what phrase would you point to? Yeah, I know you're <laughs> I know you're thinking of right. What's the phrase you're looking for? Yeah, better than Kitov, but Tov Ma'od, right? Is that the end of Brachis? Then God Everything is very good. 
So that's like against al -Razi. Okay, so this was a summary, bullet point one. Some people believe that there's more Ra than Tov in the world. al -Razi attempted to prove this in his book. Okay. All right, any questions on that? Uh, uh, he was a Muslim philosopher. I don't know what sect of Muslims. I don't know if he's from that those uh, Mitukali Mum or if he's from a different one. Yeah. Okay. So how would you, if you were not using Torah, how would you argue before before reading on? How would you argue against uh, Al Razi? Well, first of all, you can say that all things are good. Okay. Maybe not. So that's not a good way. I mean, I guess it wouldn't just prove his argument, but right. disprove his way of, like, his... His method. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if he, like, looks at someone who, like, is going through something raw at the moment, like, then if he looks at them, like, in a couple of months, when they're uh. they're all, like... Awesome. Okay, good. So that's actually the, the like, the route the wrong is going to take. Okay? Who wants to read now? This is the most fun part. Yeah, go ahead, Leah. Origin of error is to be found in the circumstance of the truth behind things. If you party among the common people, judge the whole universe by examining one single person. Where an ignorant man believes that the whole universe only exists for him as if nothing else required and can create. If, therefore, anything happens to him contrary to his expectation, he at once concludes that the whole universe is wrong. Okay, right. So similar to what Emily was saying, only he's saying that Emily was saying, like, if you look at one person when they're suffering bad, then you can conclude that uh, that everything is bad. But Ram is saying that which person do they judge everything by? themselves right is that they they look at themselves and they judge the entire universe based on that okay yes it's it's an extremely by definition biased way of like looking at it so this is very reminiscent of like uh the type of immature um reaction that sometimes like kids have when let's say like their parent doesn't let them do something and they say like my mom's horrible a horrible person you know like okay fine right now there's something that that your mom is doing that you don't like but what the mistake is to take that and like extrapolate it and and universalize you know or or like we were saying yesterday is like like if you go to a uh, a school or a restaurant or a something and like you make your entire judgment based on the one experience that you have, and then you just universalize it to everything. It's almost like which fallacy, similar to not exactly. Say again. Uh, it is hasty. It is a form of hasty generalization. That's true. Um, I guess it's, uh, what I was thinking is similar to the one we did yesterday of anecdotal evidence. Only it's using the anecdote that you uh, of, of like your own experience. Cherry picking. Yeah, exactly. A lot of fallacies. Yeah. I mean, everyone. Differently. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a really, really good point. That's going to come up later also. Uh, all right, Leah, uh, read. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. Let me just put up the summary. So people tend to judge the entire universe in terms of themselves as if the whole universe existed for them. And if anything goes contrary to their desires, they condemn the universe as raw, like the universe is out to get them. Yeah, Ayala? Yeah, it doesn't seem like the all-raw thing. He's just saying, like, Dessert. He's not saying it's He's saying like right. So what I think the Ramam is doing is because if you ask Al Razi, is he doing this? You'd say no, obviously, right? I think what the Ramam is doing is he's saying that the mistake, the 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 like the psychological mistake that Al Razi makes that causes him to weigh his data that way is judging everything by by himself. Standard. Yeah, the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meaning like like it's causing him to skew the the observations that he's making and say like like for example like all these things that i tried to do, do in my life didn't work out and like like all this bad stuff happened to me therefore the universe is bad you're saying like you're you could you could judge what's bad but not, not that you personally not that you're doing it based on too little of a sample size just that you're like all evidence that you're getting is skewed I, I think it's both. I think it is too little of a sample size because he's only taking into account his own experiences and he's also skewing it. And and just like just to give an analogy using the same thing, like like if you ask someone who hates the uh, let's say you take someone who really doesn't like the school that they're in, you know, and and you catch them saying like like, oh, this school is, is terrible. And then you ask them for evidence, they'll list things. So if you if you like snapshot that and say, well, what's going on there? They're listing things because they think that this is the evidence but they're also skewing that evidence because they're not looking at all the actual good things about it. So that's, that's why I feel like it's just hard to be objective about it because if you, if you actually wanted to measure how many good things happen in a person's lifetime, right? Yeah. A person decides, okay, every single day I'm going to go through every single good thing, that yeah. every single bad thing. If you come into that day with 
bad perspective, you're going to have more bad things. Exactly, right. I mean, it's going to actually taint your perception. So there is no, there is no objective. Yeah. No, just because, just because you, okay, uh, there's, there's two moves. Okay, well, the thing that I agree that you said is that it's very subjective, but just because there is a subjective way of looking at it doesn't mean that there's no objective way. Meaning you're giving an example of like, if you happen to be in a bad mood, whatever, or a good mood, it's going to skew your accounting, but that doesn't mean that there is no objective standard. It just means that there are subjective ones. Right, and the Raman is going to now argue that there is an objective standard. Actually, let's just read this next, next part here because he's going to say that now. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, however, he would take, yeah. If, however, he would take into consideration the whole universe, form an idea of it, and comprehend what a small portion he is of the universe, he will find truth. It is clear that a person who, that a person, that persons who have Okay, so what's his argument here? You're looking at only one small tiny aspect of the entire universe. Exactly. And the universe is bad because of that. Exactly. And and what is his argument that the universe is actually good? Look at all the other things, Look at all the other things where everything is is free of bad and 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 runs smoothly and perfectly. Okay. There's more raw than Tolkien. All raw is his argument. There's more raw than told in his life. Yeah, it, I think it's it, I think it's it's very narrow. It's in it's in human life, and then within human life, it's like he's judging it based on the stuff that he experiences. But he's claiming that that is on the universe. He's claiming it's about the universe. Yeah. If Al Razi's <laughs> argument was my life sucks, so then like maybe you can say, okay, you're right. <laughs> you know, maybe you can say you're right. Or at least at the very least, you'd be into the thing Leah said, which is that you know, is your perspective skewing your own view on your life, you know? But he, he's trying to make a statement, like, the, the, I mean, I'm not inferring it from the title of his book, but I'm assuming that his book was on metaphysics and theology, which is about the entire universe, that he that he is making a statement about the entire universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, question here, and uh, I, I know different people have been in different classes of mine. Have we ever done a thing where I show you the, there's a collection of videos that I have uh, about the universe or the size of the universe? Have we done this? We did one that was, it was like a Jewish video though. Like these, it's, like Jewish it's the zoom, the zooming out one. Oh yeah, we yeah. did that one. Yeah? yeah? Okay, that was in Tefila Group. Did we do the, um, uh, do we do the, uh, yeah. the stars, the, um, the, uh, do we do plant sizes? I think so. I think so. Okay, yeah. I think we also did have, Oh, yes, right, right, yeah, because th this comes up sometimes in Koalas, some years it doesn't, so I just wanted to know if, if we've done that, yeah, okay, fine. Um, do we do the scale of the universe, the sliding scale where you can go uh, the biggest objects and the smallest objects? Okay, so let, let's do that. Just, I, I like to supplement this with uh, this kind of thing because it's, um, this is easy to say that, oh, the universe is so big, but, um, but we don't, uh, it's different when it hits your emotions. Okay, hold on. Is this not? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so we've done this one with the planets. The. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do um, a scale of the universe. Okay. Th this hopefully this will work. Uh, hopefully I won't have to install anything. Oh, you know what? Am I not sharing this for Eliana? Hold on. Stop share. Resume share. English. Okay, hold on. Let me. Uh, I was on video. It's an interactive thingy. Ooh. Yeah, and it's got some. Uh, uh, should be music. Yeah. Have you, have you done this? No? no. Okay. Okay. So hold on. I'll show you. Um, sorry, it's not bigger. I'm trying to. I think this is as big as I'm going to get it. Okay. So this is. Where's we started to. Oh, here we go. Okay, let's start with uh, with human. Okay, so the, these are this is the scale of the universe. So this is a human, and a, you've ever seen a sunflower? Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. So like they're pretty tall. Okay, right. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's let's zoom. Uh, uh, size. Yeah, height. Yeah. Right. So you see here. Giant spider. No way. Spider crab. 
Yeah, that's yeah. Well, I, I, if there's a way to do this on, uh, I didn't have to like click or drag, right? Whatever. <laughs> oh, you you ain't seen nothing yet. You know the Burj Khalifa is the tallest building, right? Okay, yeah, Vatican City. Vatican City is the biggest, uh, is the um, smallest country. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Angel Falls. What's cool? uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, Uluru. You know, Uluru is that's a huge rock in uh, Australia. Yeah. Okay. Mount Everest. I like the music in the background. Yeah. Rhode Island. Well, look at those plants that are beside each other. Yeah. Rwanda? <laughs> it's, it's, oh, you want to turn off the light? Yeah, so here's a bunch of the moons of uh, yeah. Minecraft world. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't know these plants. Yeah, all these are stars. I'm waiting for the sun. We were, I think we're past that. Mm -hmm. Did do we, uh, I think we passed that? Yeah, definitely because the sun is not as big as the distance from the Earth to the sun. Oh, you know what a light day is. You could probably guess. It's the uh, it's the distance that light could travel in a day. Okay. What's the nebula? Nebula is uh, is I think gases, right? That are uh, these giant. Uh, there's a light year. So a light years. Which I was in now. What's the, what are those things called with the stars? You look at the stars. Yeah. On the NASA website, you can put in your birthday yeah. and it'll show you like um, which planetary thing. Planetary. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the size of the observable universe. <laughs> okay, so now let's go in again. Okay, back. Look at that little dot, something is bad, and he calls it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And not only that, but now let's go inward. Smaller. I don't know what Russell Steepot is, but I know what a basketball is. <laughs> Hummingbird. Matchstick. Chicken egg. U.S. penny. Glass marble. Sunflower seed. Coffee bean. Ant. Duckweed. Sleet. Largest bacteria. Grain of sand. All right, so now everything here is smaller than a grain of sand amoeba paramecium human ovum width of human hair okay so everything here is now smaller than the width of human hair uh infrared wavelength skin cell mist droplet red blood cell yeah clay particle largest virus mimi virus bacteriophage small thing smallest thing visible to an optical uh, microscope uh, I think this is pre-corona. <laughs> Carbon atom. Hydrogen atom. Helium atom. Yeah, this stuff is smaller than you can see. There's electron. Classic. Classic. Helium nucleus. Prot it says... Uh, Electron classical, <laughs> uh, neutron. Links shorter than this are not confirmed. Okay, so these are all things that are theoretical. The uh, uh, range of the weak force, <laughs> so weak. Up quark, down quark, strange quark, charm quark, bottom quark, high energy neutrino, top quark, neutrino. I think it's like a subatomic particle. Here, 
All right, so this is this is the mock looks about like what is the um what's like at the bottom of uh, matter, right? Is it quantum foam or is it is string theory? You know, and then Planck length is the the shortest length. Okay, <laughs> so the the what would the Raman say to R Z based on all of this? I, I you, you said half of it already. Yeah, you are. I mean, I'll be good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. And you're just a tiny little peck, and you're saying that you know how the whole universe is based on based on your tiny little experience, and then. Right, and in fact, not only that, but all of this stuff point to all of the raos that occur in all of these things. You're not going to find stuff like that. You know, all of this stuff is functioning properly and doing what it's supposed to do, and everything like that. And everything is going well. And everything's being lawfulness. And everything's being chachma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just the humans are uh, <laughs> in in your human world. You think that you're judging everything based on that, but the universe as a whole is not like that. You want me to show you another one of these things? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, albatross. Oh, albatross. Yeah. All right. I think this. Let me see if I can find this one. Oh, actually, I'm going to show you uh, another video. Uh, let's do. Let's do depth of the ocean. Um. Uh. There's like a depth of the ocean simulator. I can't see the keys. Simulator. Ah, uh, this. So this, this is insane here. Okay, so um, you think you know how deep the ocean is. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is, uh, and remember, the, the, the point of all this is to show how, like, if, if you're saying that everything in the world is raw, you're really taking into account a very, very small portion of the world. Okay, so let's, let's go on our journey here. Can I not scroll down? Okay, so Atlantic salmon, manatee. I'll, I'll read it in case you can see. Striped bass. What? what? That's a swim. What did you? Yeah, polar bear swim, yeah. Uh, clownfish, Nemo. Um, Atlantic cod, leafy sea dragon, mahi mahi. Uh, now, I, the one thing I, I wish, I wish you could convert this to um, feet. Uh, anyone know how many uh, feet are in a meter? Yeah. Oh, many. I remember hearing that like the depth of the ocean meter. is. Oh, you're right. Sky. One meter equals three feet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so just multiply this by. Um, uh, by by three, okay. Great barracuda, killer whale, sea lion, bull shark, black drum, green sea turtle, Atlantic mackerel, dentex. All right, now we're in the twilight. Yeah, the twilight zone. Yeah, you know they have different names for the zones in the ocean. What was that? This is where it's like dark. Uh, uh it's not fully dark yet because I think light can still get here. Oh my god, they have that thing that like touches. Yeah, great white shark. Okay, so this is already at the depth of the great white shark. Okay, bottlenose blue dolphin, cockatoo squid, gummy shark. Okay, so a human oh, at three three hundred twenty-two meters, the this is the deepest any human has ever scuba dived. Yeah, because yeah, because what? That's thousands. Right. So they didn't even they can't even go that deep with the submarine. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Blue shark, know? firefly squid, big guy tuna, sea angel. Oh. Want, just wants a hug. <laughs> Chinook salmon. Well, I don't know if salmon are that deep. Mako shark, emperor penguin dive. That's impressive. Whoa. Emperor penguin dive. That 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 deep swordfish, nautilus, sunfish, bamboo coral. There's your spider crab. Okay, good. It's so far down. We'll never get yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you wanted to like dive down there, you're not gonna get it. Uh, I always forget how to pronounce this. Seal 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 I, I forgot how to say it. They thought that this was a prehistoric creature, and then they found one in 1938. Uh, king crab. Giant Pacific octopus. How do they find it? Um, so you can, uh, you, first of all, you, you, human beings could go down deeper, but in in a, in a sea vessel, oh. right? So that's how they okay. found it. They just, uh, well, yeah, the deepest, the deepest point. All the way to the bottom. Yeah, all the way to the bottom. Yeah, that's where we're going. So. Yes, that's that's how they found it. That's <laughs> that's James Cameron, the guy that's who. That high on the bar. Oh my god. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, Pacific cod. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, sperm sperm whale, big big whale there. And remember, and that's pretty crazy because wh whales are mammals, right? So like they need yeah. they need to go up for oxygen. So that's pretty cool. Sea back turtle. Uh, that doesn't look like a whale. It looks like a mistaken dolphin. All right, the midnight zone. No sunlight is able to reach this deep. Many deep sea creatures cope by creating light themselves, also known as bioluminescence. So this is going to be the interesting thing: is that like how are there ecosystems that are viable down here, right? Given the fact that there's no sunlight, so that's the impressive. Oh, anglerfish. That was also in Finding Nemo. 
right? The thing with the, uh, they have a bioluminescent lure to attract prey in the darkness. Uh, Ronima, orange. Oh, that's wow, that's crazy. The orange ro roji, rogi, can live up to 200 years. Deep sea life uh, often have elongated lifespans. Venus flytrap, sea anemone. Oh, we have Blobfish, that. that's the ugly Blobfish. fish, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, frilled shark, that's scary. Um, Goblin shark. Goblin sharks are known as living fossils because they're the only living species of a lineage that has existed for 125 million years. Guess you don't need to evolve much. If you've made it that far, there's not going to be any new things that like force your evolution. Uh, Bubblegum coral. Hmm. Hatcher, fish, hatchet fish. Not, not nearly that long, Leia. <laughs> <laughs> Dragonfish. Uh, big red jellyfish. Um, many deep sea species use the color red as camouflage since it's the first color to leave the spectrum as you dive deeper. Uh, Greenland halibut, giant tube worm. They get the nutrients from hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents are formed when seawater passing through extremely hot volcanic rocks. They release heavy metals that are toxic to most animals. But even in those extreme conditions, specialized life finds a way to survive. The Yeti crab, they live on hydrothermal vents. Ooh, what is this? The six gill sharks spend the day in deep waters and the night in shallow waters. They can be found all over the world. Wow, that's interesting. Like shadow, like a million meters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Deepest dive of a narwhal. Wow. That's crazy depth. You can dive up to this depth uh, 15 times in a day and search for, for food. It's only 3,000 feet. Yeah, so it's more, much longer than you would take to get to the ledge, which Leia. <laughs> 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 Jewel squid. Uh, sea pen. Anyone have a pen? Yes, I dropped it. The uh, telescope <laughs> <laughs> octopus are most, uh, almost completely transparent and have unique protruding eyes. Giant isopod. Meals are rare in the deep sea. Deep sea creatures have adapted this. One giant isopod in captivity went five years without eating. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Greenland shark. That's, I think, the oldest. The, I think they found the oldest specimen. I think they found a shark that was like 200 and something years old. Oh, colossal squid. Largest known squid species, they can reach a length of 10 meters and weigh up to 700 kilograms. Submarines yeah. are able to go this deep. Yeah. Uh, well, not submarines. Um, well, I guess you, I don't know if you called a submarine or like a deep sea going vessel. Oh, yeah. Barrel eye fish have a transparent head that allows their eyes to collect more light. That's the best way to get light into your head if you just have a transparent head. Um, <laughs> wow. I am shocked that there are mammals that can go this deep. Elephant, elephant seal dive. Yeah. Uh, oh, this again. Did you say it's really not that deep? Yeah, there's, the ocean is always deeper. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, right. But you you do appreciate how deep this is, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, just because, how, how many feet in a mile? You guys know? 5,000. I always forget. 5,280, close, close. Oh. Right, so 5,280, and this is, um, so this is all, uh, two, yeah, two, five, Two five, ah, uh, two five three. Oh, I probably could have done this in my head quicker. Uh, <laughs> I can't see the keyboard. That's around two five three o oh, times three equals. So we're almost two miles deep. Okay. I mean, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. <laughs> you have no appreciation for extreme conditions, Leia. Uh, black swallowers can swallow an entire fish whole, even those vastly larger than themselves. I don't know how that works. What was that? Viper fish? Scaly foot snail gets its name from the iron plates on its foot and the iron shell it makes out of iron sulfide. Vampire squids eat marine snow. Oh, this is a marine snow is organic material that falls from shallower waters, like all the decomposed stuff. Yeah. Uh, headless chicken fish are sea cucumbers with wing like fins that allow them to swim. Zombie worm. Yeah. Cuvier's, no. <laughs> Cuvier's beaked whale dive. Uh, deepest diving mammals. There you go. That's the, the deepest it can get. Glass sponge. Gulper eel. Cosmic jellyfish. That's a, the names get cooler. Have like a few hundred, hundred feet <laughs> yeah, right. But that's kind of not as good because there's not, they still have to find their food. So they have to like go all around. Harp sponge. That is weird, yeah. Uh, cookie cutter shark. <laughs> That's kind of a uh, mistakenly adorable name. Uh, this shark takes cookie shaved chunks out of its prey. Never mind. <laughs> uh, lizard fish. Flabby whale fish. <laughs> That's like an insult. <laughs> Probably got called that by his own player. This is the average depth of the ocean. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So in some places it goes deeper, much deeper. 
Uh, on April 14th, 1912, the Titanic sank to its final resting place at the depth of 3,800 meters. So that's Titanic. Um, Isn't that what the name is called something? Atlantis? Is that it? Uh, call, like, that area under it. I don't know. Patagonian okay. toothfish have antifreeze. What was that? How long ago? Oh, iceberg. Yeah. Um, Patagonian toothfish have an antifreeze property proteins in its tissues to prevent freezing and subject temperatures. And by the way, again, this is not just to show you how much there is in the world, but the fact that like this raws don't happen to this fish in the same way that they have an already meaning it has everything it needs to, to survive and get all of its needs. That's the, the point they're on being, oh, Dumbo octopus, <laughs> the abyssal zone. The temperature here is near freezing and very few animals can survive the extreme pressure. Because, and, and you know, uh, just flame shot here, make sure we're on the same page. How does, where does pressure come from in the ocean? The, the weight of all the water. Yeah. yeah, exactly, right? So if you've ever carried a bucket of water, like you're like, oh, this is heavy. Well, imagine all of the water in the ocean crushing Everything here. Uh, Atola jellyfish. Because that's how shallow the ocean was there. Not shallow, but that's the, it, it went to the bottom, but the, there's different depths of the ocean. Sea pig, yeah. That one's not kosher. Uh, Mega mouth sharks are one of the largest growing shark species, with some reaching seven meters long. What was that? Fang tooth. Yes, they do. Yeah. Tripod fish. Uh, Faceless fish. Ugh. I guess you don't need much of a face <laughs> when there's nothing to see and nothing to like. Amphipodia. This is the deepest point of the Manila Trench in the South China Sea, right? So trenches are like these, um, uh, like I mean, you know what a trench is, right? But but there are different depths of trenches all over the uh, the ocean. Brittle star. Abyssal spiderfish. Ooh, whoa, I'm. Most of the Haddle Zone. Most of the Haddle Zone takes place in deep sea trenches. Deep sea trenches formed by a process called subduction, where the Earth's tectonic plates meet and push together. Uh, oh, that shipwreck made it down. <laughs> Sank in World War II is the deepest uh, shipwreck ever found. Deep sea can be a lonely place. <laughs> yeah. Life here is sparse. The extreme conditions make survival difficult, but still not impossible. <laughs> Yeah, How many people have been uh, not very many. And in fact, what we're going to see, I think they're going to list this. The guy who, have, how many of you have seen the movie, The Titanic? Yeah, okay, right. So James Cameron, the guy who made the movie, is the one who beat the record for going the deepest in the, to the deepest spot in the ocean. Um, yeah, um, so we'll, uh, hopefully they'll say that. Uh, I thought it said Citron. That was an astronaut. I feel like everyone always talks about like going to the moon. Yeah. Space. No one ever talks about They that. say, yeah, the ocean is less explored than the moon. They, we know less about the bottom of the ocean than the moon. So little is known about life in these deep environments. Almost every expedition uncovers something new. Still going. Uh, comb jellies have been around for 500 million years. Despite looking like jellyfish, they are not closely related. Um, whoa. Oh, really this is the deepest point in the Java Trench in the Indian Ocean. You say you really want to go there? Yeah. Okay. Fun. You might not see me again. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Hadal snailfish. Hadal. Yeah, Hadal. Uh, cusk eel. This is the lowest point in the Puerto Rico trench. Okay, fine. You have scrolled the height of Mount Everest. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that says something. Many probes and submarines have been lost. <laughs> trying to reach the deepest parts of the ocean. On January 23rd, 1960, about nine years before the moon landing, humans went where they never had before. Uh, two men, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh, on board the submarine, I guess they do call it a submarine, Trieste, slowly descended into the Mariana Trench. Mariana Trench is the deepest part of the ocean. So this is them going down. Let's find out. Their goal was to... Uh, I, I don't know, actually. That's a good question. Maybe they could send devices down. Could be. Their goal was to reach the Challenger Deep, the deepest point in the ocean. Yeah, I was wondering about that also. Yeah, but it might be too far. Uh, the submarine used a rebreather system that would later be used in spacecraft. There was barely enough space in the pressure sphere for, for both of them. Both of them. The the people, yeah. Uh, the immense pressure of the sea, deep sea, means any mistake would mean near certain death, right? Because like anything is like off, then just entirely gets crushed during the descent. One of the window panes cracked <laughs> and shook the entire. Can you imagine how scary that would be? Because you can't just like go up. Oh man. Nevertheless, they continued. 
No, it didn't. It didn't fully break. Even at these unfathomable depths, Jacques and Don could still see life outside the window. Life can survive unimaginable environments. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. After four hours and 47 minutes of anxiety and claustrophobia, uh, they succeeded and became the first humans to reach the deepest point in the ocean, Wait, the Challenger Deep. Only four hours to get to the bottom? Yeah, I guess. So From, like four hours. Well, that's really not, yeah. So but what's it, his name? It, it, so four hours in, so we can calculate the speed, right? Um, calculator. Right, so probably going like. So 10915 times three. Divided by how much was a mile? Five two eight zero. Five two eight zero. So that was six point two miles, right? And then yeah. So how how long does it say to take them for? Four hours, um, four and a half. Yeah. Uh, so I just <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like they're going pretty slowly. Yeah. Anyway, so that, that that's the deep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even know how a submarine moves down. No. Like so. this. Okay, yeah, right, down. yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so that that's that's the sea. Uh, you want to watch another video? <laughs> this is okay. uh, Yeah, these, these, it's a fun thing. Uh, did I ever show you? Hold on a second. Um, oh, so you said I did show you the planet sizes one, right? I don't remember. All right, I'll show you this one. This is... Uh, so the, the oh. Yes, and okay. So th this is similar to the zoom thingy that we did, but this is a, uh, I think more uh, impressive. This is making Eliana look really big. <laughs> There's the sun. Leah's like, it's not like, it's not that big. <laughs> I think it's going to compare the size of Earth. To this, I think that's where it's going. Yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, this one, I think, I have to search for um, uh, highest qual. Oop, that's <laughs> I can't see. I don't know who that is. Highest quality, um, not ASMR. <laughs> highest quality photo of space. Oh, this is the one. Oh, so this one, I, we're, we're gonna have to see. Uh, we should just get ad. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, ideally, we would sit, put this at the highest uh, setting, but I think it would make it too slow. So I'm just gonna try to go one. Let's go to HD like that and see if it's gonna work. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll try. <laughs> okay so uh it's important when you watch this to keep in mind oh so the purpose of this is going to be to show you like how many stars there are that just that we can see okay so keep in mind the size of the mountain so now it zooms in oh let me just go back again okay uh so just note 
how small this little portion is that we're zooming into here. On January 5th, 2015, the NASA Hubble Space Telescope released the biggest image ever taken of the Andromeda Galaxy. That's the closest galaxy to us. Okay. Zoom in. The image is a total of 1.5 billion pixels requiring 4.3 gigs of disk space. It provides a starting glimpse at the sheer scale of our nearest galactic neighbor. All right, now this is the craziest part. And remember that each, all of these are stars, some of which are like, you know, like of the very, of the very sizes that we saw in, uh, in that last video. Yeah, but it's going to get going in a second. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready? These are all still stars. It's just it's very, very densely uh, clustered. I guess it's like the center of the galaxy. Okay, and then now you get reminded of how small the um, the original picture was. So that was what we just went through. And then that was from that, just one fourth of the galaxy. And that's the picture, the view from, from Earth. Okay, <laughs> and you wanna guess, I don't know the answer to this. You wanna guess how many stars are in the Andromeda galaxy? You wanna guess? Andromeda? That was Andromeda, yeah. Um, Three million stars yeah. are in the Andromeda Andromeda galaxy. Uh, over one trillion. Okay. okay. And anyone want to guess how many gal how many galaxies are there in the universe? Approximate. How many galaxies are there? I think they're like a million or something. Uh, I think it's more. Two two million million. Two, it's two trillion, which is two million million. Yeah. Okay. And um, so we're talking like, and so then two trillion times. Well, how many stars do we say are in the Andromeda galaxy? Like about right. And I think the Andromeda galaxy is a small galaxy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's like you know. So for Al Razi to say, well, look at all. I'm going to count all the bad stuff. The universe is bad. <laughs> you know, it's just an extremely egotistical, uh, egocentric perspective. Okay. All right, good stopping point for today. All right, uh, let's take a break and then we'll come back. Thank you. Thank you.